Okay, got around to doing that little necklace demo for you, so I'm quickly going to mix a couple of those skin tones uh, and lay them down. I put in a couple dots of frisket since I knew that you already had used a little bit of that to preserve some of the like whiter areas in the necklace, but I didn't put a whole bunch down or preserve all the different areas because I think I recall the ears were a little bit more like spread out, not so much organized to meet like every little jewel in the necklace, so I just put a couple down. So we're gonna do two different ways, one with frisket and one with a gel pen or a colored pencil to help get the whites back in. So one of the things to think about when we want something to sparkle or we want something to feel like it glows is that everything else has to have color on it or value on it so that that thing looks the brightest that it possibly can. So the brightest we've got is just white. We don't have like shining light. So that means everything else needs to have color on it. So even though they're very thin washes, the skin color, I'm kind of covering up all of the different white areas, starting to add in my shadows and sort of when I'm thinking about adding the shadows, also looking at the shape of the necklace, the rhythm, the curve, the way it follows the neck, and adding a little bit of shadows for where those jewels will be. I'm adding those pinker tones that we talked about. So we did a more yellow base, we did a little bit of, I let that dry, and then did a shadow color. Now I'm adding a little bit of the pinker tones to warm it up. which is starting, and as I'm doing it, I'm using kind of a broken line. Here I'm gonna create texture to kind of fake the texture of the jewels. So instead of creating like solid big washes with my brush, I'm creating kind of little drips, little spots, little areas. The idea being that these shadows would fall underneath, like since the light is coming kind of from that top left-hand corner in this research image, um, that the light and the shadow have to interact. So the shadow should fall kind of around the bottom and to the right-hand side. But when we can pop those little lights back in, we'll put them on top of these dots and they'll feel like they have a shadow behind them. I'm mixing a little bit of oranges into my blues to help neutralize them. It's not an incredibly bright or vibrant research image. So here are those tiny little dots. I'm finding the shadows underneath the stones. So we already laid in sort of large shadows that cover the whole area, something like a cast shadow. These are more like individual cast shadows for the stones and to show us how it's actually built. I'm using a bit of a muddy kind of bluish purple with a lot of gray tone in it from adding the orange in and it's fairly watered down. Truthfully, when I got done with this, I realized that I made these a touch dark. Um, I could have done with less saturation. or bump the saturation up everywhere else, which is probably what I would do. But for this demo, uh, I didn't want to spend all day on it, sorry. So you can see we're creating kind of those textures. We're creating just the shadow aspect of it. You're not seeing the light right now because we haven't added it back in or peeled up the frisket yet. But you can kind of see the way I'm using a couple different colors. There's a bounced blue, more of a cyan color in some of the images. So I'm adding that in. Before you do something that's controlled, creating texture, always make sure that the page is dry or all of these little dots would spread, right? So know that I'm pausing this and hitting it with a blow dryer before I start things. Also going ahead and adding in some of the darkness of the background, since I know that that will help make the jewels seem brighter if the background is darker. So here we are, we're finally able to pull up the frisket. You can see those beautiful bright white little dots. Since it's frisket, they're a little bit actually kind of too bright, <laughs> too big, too bright. Um, so I'm darkening the background again, using a damp brush to feather the edges. And now I'm gonna mix a little bit of that shadow color again and go back in and keep adding in some shadows. This one's more of like um, leaning towards a warm gray. So I used a, like a lavender with a touch of this yellow ochre in it and a lot of water. And then I'm darkening up a couple areas on the skin that seem too bright so that once again, this is, becomes the brightest area. So this is a gel pen. I'm using it. You can see that it makes good little dots. I'm also showing you how to use a white colored pencil if you need to bop any highlights back in. You could use a white colored pencil to do the stonework like I'm showing here, but it doesn't come off quite as bright or you'll have to really grind the point into it. So I'm going to return to my gel pen, but you're free to use a colored pencil if that's what you've got. Um, and using that to kind of put a few little textures in. 
So once you have those bright white areas, I like to go through with a pencil or a color pencil and add a little line work to connect the stones to also give that shadow towards the back end of them. It just makes everything pop a little bit more, helps them seem brighter by contrast, and here's the finished product. I hope that that helps.